Now, I've had a lot of, I'd say, important people on this show with wise sports knowledge, but I doubt I've had anyone with an impressive resume of averaging 20 points, six and a half boards his senior year, named Oscar Robinson National Player of the Year back in January, has, been, has played the NCAA tournament twice, he has two-time All-Patriot League, he was play, played in the Reese's College All-Star, College Basketball All-Star game this year, and he, he became the 28th student to eclipse the 1,000 point mark back in March, and I'm very happy to welcome American's own Vlad Mulvaney to the show. And if you don't believe me that he is here, Vlad, thank you once again for coming on the show. <laughs> oh, good morning. It was my pleasure. I have to ask, you had a very busy month of April. How has everything been going training-wise ever since the season ended? It's, uh, it's been pretty crazy. You know, uh, two workouts a day, plus the strength and the conditioning stuff. And uh, the PIT, the college all-star game. And of course, I wanted to graduate on time, so uh, I had to do my schoolwork. And I think I was the only guy doing school, uh, homework at an All-Star game, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just, I promised my mom I would graduate, so I have to stay in school and graduate. And uh, now I'm kind of getting ready to transition to just a full-time professional basketball player. <laughs> I have to ask for those those two games. What was it like to play on the floor that the Final Four was played? That whole atmosphere of playing with guys like Andrew Godlook. Uh, Gray for Pittsburgh, Wanamaker. What was it like playing with those guys on that floor in that atmosphere? Oh, it was uh, it was great. I think uh, the best part about it was uh, kind of getting to see the Final Four games, um, uh, kind of seeing the the Butler practice right before we took the floor Friday. See see how crazy it was, and uh, I, I feel kind of bad didn't play in the Final Four. You know, the, like when I think back about it, and it's just. Uh, I wish I could have played in the Final Four, or, uh, like a Sweet Sixteen, a Lit Eight, and um, but it was it was it was great. I mean, you can't really compare it to anything. Also, for the uh, Portsmouth Invitational, your team actually won that. What was it like to say that you guys are a winner of a prestigious post-college tournament? I think we had a very balanced team. Uh, we didn't have those guys that everybody talks about, kind of taking shots, taking a lot of shots, and. Uh, I don't think we had a guy take more than 13, 14 shots a game. And, uh, and that's why we won. Uh, we all made a point the first day that we're trying to win this. That's how we're going to get the best attention from the scouts. You know, nobody's going to be at the early games. Everybody's going to want to see the, the semifinals, the championship game. So uh, that's how we started. We, we started with the right attitude, I think. You know, and, uh, when, the, when we first met, we all said we want to win. Like on a team with Rick Jackson from Syracuse, if I'm right. Yeah, it was Rick Jackson, Frank Cassell from ODU, Jimmy Butler from Marquette, uh, who was uh, Chris Warren from uh, Mississippi. We we had a pretty good team, I think. <laughs> I'd say also uh, back to the the All Star game in Houston. What was it like having Jeff Jones as being an assistant coach for your team? Um, it, was, it was I think it was fun uh, to see him that way. You know, a lot more relaxed uh, and. Uh, it was it was a different experience from uh, what I've been dealing with in the past two years, you know. But uh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> I wasn't used to it, and I don't think I like it. All right, uh, we got some questions from fans that submitted their questions on Facebook, and I'll start with Tom from Denver. He's asking, "What is the process that you are going to participate and take to possibly enter the NBA draft, and what steps have you taken so far to give your ch to yourself the best chance possible?" Well, you have to stay in shape. So uh, you have to work out every day. I you know it's not really the off season. It's kind of uh, it's, uh, get ready for a job interview. All these guys are judging you. All these guys are picking on you. You know they're interview you. Uh, you kind of pick your brain, see what you're thinking, uh, see what your basketball IQ is. Uh, then they want to see you on the floor and they want to see you in your uh, in your best shape. Uh, besides that, you just kind of get get mentally ready for both sides. Not necessarily that I wouldn't make the NBA, but just because of the lockout, you might end up in Europe anyway. So it's just getting mentally ready for what's going to come next. You know, I'm not, I have no idea where I'm going to be next. Uh, well, I have a couple offers from Europe, so I know that's pretty much set. You know, just I know I have a good idea where I, I could end up in Europe, which is really good. But uh, regarding the NBA, uh, 
I got a couple of teams that call me, that call my mom, they call my agent. Uh, that should start the workouts and the interviews and all that kind of stuff. That should start like May 4th once the underclassmen kind of pull out or they decide who, whoever stays in. Because now until May 4th, everybody's looking at the underclassmen. All right, and also, um, Chris from Cleveland asks, is there a specific team that you've always dreamed of playing for? Uh, no, but I think I would have a lot of fun playing with LeBron or uh, with guys that can really pass the ball. They can create their own shots, and they can just uh, take over games. Because uh, you really have to know your role in the NBA. It's, that is crucial for a player's career, you know. If you look at... Uh, Play European players like Pedro Stakovic, he knows his role, he does it really well. And uh, you can't just try to be the guy when you obviously can't be the guy. So I think that's the, that's the, that's the main thing, you just kind of getting adjusted to being that guy that's just going to hit open trees, going to just make the easy plays and make the, make the game easier for that main guy. All right, Zach from Santa Cruz, California asks, if you are, if you're not picked by an NBA team this summer, would you rather stay in the United States to pursue it or go abroad and play in Europe? No, I think uh, that perception of the NBDL being uh, so washed by the NBA and that uh, you get players that get picked up. Yeah, you get two players every year that get picked up. But if you look at the NBA draft, the following summer, you have at least four or five European players. So they clearly scout overseas uh there are going to be examples in this year's draft, um, so I don't think I would play in the NBDL. I think it's a financial decision too. It's not. It's not worth it for me financially to play in the NBDL. All right, uh, Julie from Cleveland asks: We've seen your great, you've heard of your great athleticism and teamwork and leadership on the court. What have you done off the court that has contributed to your success at AU? Uh, I th I think I'm just uh, just kind of try to be myself, you know. Uh, to try and communicate with people. I don't want people to think that, you know, oh, he's he's that guy. He's that guy that you can't really talk to, you know. He's just, if people have questions, I'm just, if they have questions about, like, college, about anything, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm here, and, like, if they see me on the street, I don't want to be like, oh, my God, that's flawed. Like, that's, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And I just want to be another guy here. So what was your time like at AU? And coming from George Mason to here, College, from, a, from a college student's like perspective, what was it like? Well, I think it was the best decision of my life. You know, American is a, is a great school, and uh, I'm graduating in May with a great degree. You know, international media with a minor in history, and uh, you can't really replace that. You know, I've been talking to my mom for a long time, and she's always been stressing out. Do you want to turn pro? Do you, no, I, I just want to get my degree first, and then we'll see what happens after. You know, I have time to play pro after. And uh, I've told him a lot of times, just on and off the court, it's been the best decision of my life right now. All right, uh, Connor from Boston, Massachusetts, wants to ask, what is, you have, I guess, a three-part question. First is, what is your <laughs> pregame meal? My pregame meal? Salad, chicken parm, and pasta, and some fruit. He also okay. wants to know, what is on Vlad's iPod? On my iPod? Oof, that's tough. <laughs> Uh, everything from country music to rock to hip hop to uh, Romanian music, to Greek music, uh, Persian music. You know, I got I got everything on my iPod. Uh, I like all kind of music, and it's just it doesn't really matter to me as long as it kind of sounds good. I don't have like a genre that's, or like an artist that I prefer. Right, and also, um, who is the most influential person in your life? Um. I think it's my whole family, just like as a whole. Uh, probably my mom is the most influential if I have to pick one. But uh, I think it's my family. Uh, every time I make a decision, uh, I think about everyone that's that's involved and that could be affected by it. So that's my grandparents, to my fiance. They all just uh, they all matter to me. And uh, when I make a decision, I think about them. Also, I want to know, growing up in Romania, who was your who were your idols growing up? That's tough because I had uh, well, one of my friends was kind of my idol. He was a little older than me. Um, I learned from him a lot. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago, so that was tough for me. But uh, well, you look up at NBA players and European players. 
I could name a couple of European players, but probably nobody knows them here because they kind of refused to play in the NBA. Uh, they just felt they weren't. It wasn't their their type of game. And uh, but players that everybody knows here is probably like Deslev Schramm, who was pretty much the first really good European to play in the NBA. And then uh, I would say Dirk Nowitzki. I love watching him play. I love kind of just stealing from him, you know, stealing his moves and right. his shots and just the way he creates his own shot. Um, not being really athletic, but kind of using his length. Um, then I love I love watching Kobe. I love uh, his motor. I love the way he works, uh, the way he competes. You know, it's just you can't really beat that. If uh, if a guy wants to win that bad, just uh, you can't compete that. You can't beat that with talent. You can't beat it with anything. Just hard work. So you sort of take the dedication of Kobe Bryant with the finesse that Dirk Nowitzki has, sort of apply it to your game. Yeah, I think you know you can't really take this lesson from Kobe Bryant, so you definitely got to take uh, what's there for you to take. And just I've been able to go to camps, you know, in Europe, and kind of had a chance to watch Dirk twice uh, while he was actually my coach at a camp, but had a chance to watch him work out from like two to five when it was lunch break, and it was just uh, it's crazy. He had like six guys around him, and he was just working his butt off. Just and it was just June, like his season just ended like two weeks before that, and it was just crazy to see how a guy that uh, is on a max deal with Dallas, he has tons of success, he's gone to the NBA Finals, he's still working that hard, and uh, that's something you gotta learn. It's not it's not all about money for some guys, you know. Maybe maybe some kids think that it's just all about money, and I want to make it big just for the money. But I think for Dirk, it's from what I've seen, is is more than that. It's more than just just a game and just a job. Is that sort of the motto you live by? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've talked to my agent. I think he knows that I'm not just gonna take the highest paying job just because the highest paying job. I think it has to be the right fit. It's a fit that I'll, I have to be able to succeed in, and uh, it's not really about making the most money right now. Yeah, when I'm 32, I'm probably <laughs> gonna go like for the highest paying job but right now I think it's about my career and kind of my legacy and kind of create a path for other Romanian players you know to kind of follow